This conference will now be recorded. So yesterday's session was more of like a preparatory session for our upcoming uh, days actually. So we uh, went through like what is our syllabus and what we are going to learn and how important is, important is our uh, programming language to our uh, automation scripts. So all these things we have been seen yesterday. And also we saw like say a small slide like how to install and stuffs. So that is what we have seen yesterday. Like uh, today as well, like we'll be continuing with the same, but with a difference. So we are going to run our first scripts in your Cypress. Okay. So just to give you or set up your machine altogether so that going further, there is uh, no confusions and all. But obviously in the upcoming sessions, like if you have any doubts, if you didn't install uh, if you didn't install so again there will be a session as well so no issues but this is ge getting you like prepared for your cypress so for some time we'll be seeing like what to install and how to install what is the package of your cypress and then we'll be moving ahead with your uh, something called your javascript programming language so initially like uh, we'll be checking out like say uh, what and how a javascript will be done and how to what are the different ways your javascript you can use to execute it so all these things we'll be checking out today uh, so brief feature about javascript we'll be checking out today so these are the two concepts that we'll be checking in out so first concept is like say how to install your cypress and go ahead with the first script and then we'll be starting off with your javascript so javascript uh, is a programming language actually as it is we'll be using it as part of our cypress so not all concepts we are using it from the javascript so we have some limitations in concepts so we are uh, the first thing is like we need to understand like we are not uh, developers so we can be developers but uh, we are not developers our role is limited to qa automation testing and quality assurance testing so based on that we have framed our javascript syllabus so what is required so uh, and also like whatever we see in our syllabus is nothing but like say with the help of these things definitely you can crack a coding interview for sure so and there are a lot of examples also coming in with the javascript so we'll be doing that one as well so there is no prerequisite for your javascript so obviously just get ready that's it so yeah so let's move on to our session so the first thing that we are going to see about today is like say how to run your first cypress and what are those modules available in your cypress we are going to see about it so this is just giving you an overview like how a cypress project will look like and then we move on to your javascript so that you have some exposure to your cypress and what are the concepts you are going to learn in, uh, learn from the javascript that will be utilized in your cypress so this is the motive of it so why we first see the installation part so installation part like say as we have discussed in yesterday's slide so we need your node.js okay so how to install your node.js or what is basically a node.js is something like so node.js is a kind of a package manager okay so it's kind of a uh, server that is available which will help you to install all your node related stuffs your npm related stuffs so where can you find or how can you install your node.js so simple as it is you can go to your google.com and then type like say node installation simple as it is so there are different ways to install your node.js and different platforms available so as you can see, this is your official website to install your Node.js. So let me ping it to you as well in the chat. So this is wherein you use it. So it supports your uh, widely used Windows and your Mac. So you can use these both the things as well as you have your libraries, Linux libraries available. So if any of you are using your Linux machine, still you can install your uh, Node.js. So it's not an issue. So when it comes to Windows installer, right, it's going to be a quite simple one. So it's a .msi file. So depending upon your Windows configuration, whether it's a 32-bit or 64-bit machine, so you need to first identify what is your Windows machine, whether it's a 32 or 64-bit. 
and depending on that you can download it so i am using a mac machine so even if i download like it will not help me out in any way so it is a very small package just you need to double click it and it runs so the default things let it be there so it's just an installation like how you install your game so it installs in your c program files and so on so on, and then it works simple as it is and for your mac os there is like say a bit difference available actually so there is a package file available which you can download and install it up so this is the package file available so you can just again double click this and install it up and similarly for your linux also you have your 64 bit or arm v7 or v8 you can use it up so these are the installers available so you can ask me like what is this source course source code sorry uh, it is nothing but to compile this package and to compile this msi obviously there is a coding involved so if you want to cd see the code of your node.js you can download this one so but anyhow it's not going to be an uh, any use to us because we are already using your windows msi or your mac os package or your linux library files so any one of this will perform the same feature as that of your source code so it is not mandatory for you to install the source code only this msi or your package or your arm or 64 bit is fine totally fine so this is what is about so it's all like a just straightforward installation so nothing much so if you after installation i would suggest you like say to restart your uh, mac or your uh, your windows and then if it's going to be your windows go to your command prompt if it's going to be your mac go to your terminal so after installation what you can check is like if the node is installed or not node hyphen version okay sorry so i need to give double hyphen sorry about that so you can see i have the latest version available so if node is not available or node you are not feeling comfortable you can give like npm version as well so that also it will give you the package version so node is like a server so inside that you have your npm so both versions would be different so don't get confused so node will have like 20.30 so that is the latest version i guess let me double check it oh, okay yeah 20.40 it is available so as you can see it over here itself your node will include the what's NPM. happening is um, on the bpa side there, there's a use case where when they're creating users, the users are getting stuck. So we're going to have to probably switch back. Uh, sorry, Harry, I need to mute you like uh, if you don't mind. So uh, Harry, if there is something like you can unmute me, no issues. I think by mistake it got unmuted from your side. So just muting you for a, a second. If something is there, just unmute or like you can ping in the chat. No problem. Okay. So as you can see over here, so node and NPM are no difference. So node has NPM inside in it. So you can see I'm a bit like say one version behind it. So that's not a big, big thing actually. So obviously you also need to have this particular 20 version of node because uh, some features of your cypress needs the latest version of your node actually so better go for the latest one so this is how you check the versions npm double hyphen sorry node the space double hyphen version and npm double hyphen version so this is how you need to check so this is in a mac i'm checking it if it's in windows no problem go to your command prompt and check it up the same command there is no difference in commands only the terminal is a different okay so I hope you get it. So this is about your node installation part. Now going to the next one. So next one is going to be your Cypress. So to install your Cypress only, we are using this node or your NPM. So how to install your Cypress first thing. So just follow these simple steps. So it's not a bit complex one. So first create a folder. Okay. For your cypress okay maybe name it as a cypress automation or something and then leave it so next thing is like say uh, we have seen like say node or npm installation 
So next thing is going to be your VS Code. So VS Code again is an installation available. So VS Code is something like an editor where we are going to code your items. Okay, just a minute. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So this is how it is. So create a folder. We didn't do it up. So first thing that we have seen is like installation of your node. And second thing we are going to do something like VS Code. And third one we are going to create a folder for your site. So these are the steps. We are going to do it now. So VS Code is nothing but it's an editor where we can write or edit or update your javascript okay so this is the most convenient editor right now available in an industry so i couldn't name anything more comfortable than vs code so if you want to name it like you can use the bb edit so which i'm using this just for a notepad i'm using it up or you can use notepad plus plus or for javascript you can use like vim also available vim that is also available uh, there is one more thing like say let me google I forgot the name actually so let me write it down like this javascript editor so again uh, whichever editor you do it doesn't matter actually because each one has an individual difference in way or how useful the tool it is so I am not forcing you yeah sublime yeah you can use sublime as well okay sublime atom visual studio so these are some of the professional tools available in industry by which by default it supports your javascript not only javascript python and all these things so i am used to vs code editor so i'll tell you like why vs code editor is useful so let's see how it installs it so just go for vs code installation simple as it is so it is compatible everywhere so windows and mac so you but you have a different package for windows and mac so visual studio code yeah this is what i need it so you can have see over here mac linux and windows available depending upon your platform you can use it up so i'm using a mac i go inside so obviously i can download it here so if you're going to be your windows just go over here download it up and again similarly for your linux you can download the same thing okay so it's not a hard and it's a pretty straightforward installation so there is nothing big rocket signs over here you can click it directly install it up okay so okay there is a question if we have node version 18.61 will it make any difference yes yes Vina. like it will make a difference like um, uh, I think like one of the reports like uh, it doesn't support 18 it needs the latest version 20 so you can update it the node version so updating the node version is simple like just override it up yeah so an Anjana like version 16.6 .6 node already installed in my machine is there need to update yeah better update it up because we are far behind like four versions so if it's like one version it's fine but uh, four versions like uh, uh, few features might not be available so just update it up yeah so you don't need to uninstall just uh, install the latest version it will automatically get updated so no need to uh, update there is no separate update available so just have the latest version 20 because the thing is like uh, once i faced an issue like say uh, there was an issue wherein i need to generate a report from your node so i need to give like say the file name of your javascript and execute it but it is not executing then i just worked around the internet and saw like say the minimum version required for the report is like say 20 so let's have the latest version it will be useful for us at uh, some point of time yeah so that's about it so Thanks Hi, for sir. Your uh, sir, from uh, when I download the, the Node.js to the updated version, it shows me 18.16.1, the latest version on my uh, system. System. Okay, 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 okay. 
uh, no problem like uh, from the first link no, i shared i think i shared i think anjana we should switch to the current uh, latest features the first tab is still showing the next tab is showing the version uh when i go to update uh, there is a latest version 8.16.1 Select the uh, current or latest features tab current, that is giving me. Yeah. So this okay. LTS is nothing but last table version. That's what they call it. But use the current version actually. This one, this tab actually. Okay. Right, right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Right. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, because last table version will be like say the most uh, stable version, but eighteen I don't think so. Like it is working actually because I think I had eighteen I think because hardly I could remember. It was a month back for the previous session. So that's why when I found out like twenty version has a lot of improvements over the eighteen or sixteen I think. Ah, I think I had the fourteen version. Yeah. So I was far behind actually. So I have the latest version. It should be useful. Yeah, so that's what is it for your installation. So when you install your Visual Studio Code, it will be looking something like this actually. So maybe let me close it and reopen it for you. So when I have the Visual Studio Code, it should look something like this. So don't worry about these things. Like it's for my mission, but for you it doesn't. It will show only the start. So this is how it exists. Your Visual Studio Code. So as soon as you have your Visual Studio Code, the next thing that we need to do about is like say install a plugin. Okay. So why I need a plugin? So install Code Runner plugin. So why I need this Code Runner plugin is like say, so your JavaScript is like a normal JS file. So there is no proper editor available in an industry which makes the script to run. But your Code Runner plugin will help you run the script. Run the script without any dependent of HTML. Okay, so I'll tell you about this. Don't worry. So how it works. So how to install your Code Runner is like say when you open your Visual Studio Code, there is something called an extensions available over here. Just click this extension. and type like say code runner and there is a code runner available dot run so click on it so since i am already installed it is showing me like this for you it will be like say how this exist install the same button will be available you can just click on it and it will install so you can see it over here without any dependencies your code runner can run any files available whether it's java c c++ groovy powershell anything it can run so this is only for our editing purpose or to run and check the code what we have written is correct or not very easily so that's what like this code runner will be helping you out with it's a very useful one just you give a try so that is how it is okay so give a try and i think like you will definitely like it and it's a most easiest tool actually so the next thing is like say we are going to do your cypress installation so next thing is nothing but your cypress installation okay so how does a cypress installation will work the first step for your cypress installation is like say create a folder anywhere inside your documents or anywhere that you don't change it up so we you can name it anything so it doesn't matter naming doesn't matter so i just gave it as a cypress so let me install it and show it to you so let me go to my documents uh, over here cypress automation here i will install something over here control shift 10 i'll install something like say cypress demo first project something like this Okay. So the next thing is like say what I need to do about over here is like I'll go to my Visual Studio Code and then I go to my Explorer over here. Uh, okay, for me it is showing like this. So or what you can do it is like say the first thing that you can do it is like go to File, Open Folder, 
go to the place where you have created like say that particular folder click on open so that path will be open for you now now next thing to install your cypress so you can do it two different ways one is like opening your command prompt or your terminal inside your visual studio code itself by going to terminal new terminal so it will open the particular terminal in which the project you have opened so that's why we first did like say file open folder and we opened it so by default your uh, visual studio terminal will identify the project in which you are into it and it will point to that particular terminal so if you are inside a terminal or inside a command prompt so you need to do a change directory cd change directory and then go to the path of your file like say right click get info so maybe for windows it's like say uh, it is like say properties you can find it out okay so i go to my terminal cd is changed directly it is common across your terminal and your uh, windows command prompt control v and enter so you are on the same path now so either ways you can do it so there is no hard and fast route so uh, i feel like comfortable over in the visual studio code so if you feel comfortable in the visual studio code you can go with that so no issues and but if you feel comfortable with command prompt no issues so first thing that you need to do it is like say initialize this folder or prepare this folder for your cypress so for that what npm init nothing do but initialize your particular folder so click on enter so it will ask for the name of the package that means what name should i give for your particular folder for your cypress name cypress demo so spacing is not allowed over here so the same name project click enter so version if you want to enter the version 1 you can enter or if you want to delete and enter or if you want to change the version to 2 you can enter it uh, sorry you need to enter 2.0.0 something like that it will work so this version is like say what version of your code so description so for what you are going to create this particular item particular cypress form demo run to check yeah. okay and then oopsies and then you have the entry point so entry point is nothing but uh, in your uh, now the uh, cypress version is like say 12 and above so that's where like say if you go like say down the lane like if it was like say 5 version or a 6 version so your index.js played a major role of supporting your cypress but now it has become void so they have combined it so i'll tell you the structure as well so here you can just click enter no problem to so test command also you we don't require anything for now we'll come to the later part and git repository as well repository we'll see at the later point of time so as of all now we don't require it and keywords anything you want to mention you can mention it if not click enter so author is who you are so you are the author of your own project so you can give it so license no license so this is how your index.json will be created for you sorry the packet.json okay so this will be available and you can click your yes and go ahead with that so you can see the packet.json is created with whatever details we have given you can still modify it over here so there is no hard and fast don't worry so you can use this one for creating your project structure so initializing your project so once you initialized your project the next thing that we need to do about is like say uh, Arun, what does the version stand for uh, the version of your project actually so like uh, of, uh, the version is nothing but like say uh, you mean this version right if i'm not wrong yeah you have given it as 2.1.1 so right? it's like our version of code actually our code version so sometimes they maintain the versions of code like say they start with one and then they iterate and change the framework accordingly and then they denote it with five or six so you can call your project like say this is a project version 
two project version five so anything you can call it up it's like only for us it's not going to interfere anything with the cypress okay got it thanks yeah thank you let's see if there is any questions available anymore okay so i don't see anything okay fine so next thing is like we need to enter this particular command so this command only will install your cypress so that is my visual studio so i'll close this one yeah so this command only will install your cypress so here when you copy paste it it needs a double hyphen okay and then enter so you can see it link like hardly within a minute it, it should install for you so it doesn't take more time so meanwhile it's installing so obviously whenever you have any doubts or any updates that you want to refer it for your cypress there is an official cypress documentation available make use of it any installation or anything like this is the way to go so this is the only source it has a very good community available you can enroll for the community in your linkedin or over here as well with your gmail account or something so this is the most useful one for a cypress developers or your cypress testers so maybe let me bring it to you as well you use the flag called the save iphone dev right what does yes. it do a uh, save hyphen dev is nothing but it will save on the particular project where it is getting installed so okay. if i didn't give save dev so basically mm -hmm. it will install on your root folder like say c users program file over there it will be installing it to you okay so so to avoid it and to install on the particular project where you are getting highlighted we give a save and dev Okay. It's hyphen hyphen save and single hyphen dev or double hyphen dev. A single hyphen dev. Yes. It's a single hyphen. Okay. Uh, sir, if uh, we can install Cypress directly, npm install Cypress. Okay, uh, there is a uh, need to hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev. Uh, sorry, can you come again? Uh, can we install Cypress just by clicking uh, npm install Cypress? Yeah, you can install. Yeah, no problem. I think it will install globally. I think in your machine. Okay. It will install right. globally. Yeah, you can install globally. There is no issue on that. But uh, still, like say, people prefer to install on the project where you're available. Available right. projects. Yeah. So over here, this is how the script is about. npm install Cypress. So this is how now it has been installed us for us. Uh, yes, now you can see the project structures available for us. Uh, package log JSON, package JSON, and node modules. So this node modules only will be useful for us for your Cypress. So this is similar to that of package in your Java. So here we call it as the node modules. So even if you delete it by mistake, no problem run the same thing npm install cypress double hyphen save dev i think it should install it together it will download the packages so basically it is installing from your server no node server to your local machine okay so that is how it works and the next thing about is like say uh, you need to install your npm install hyphen g yarn okay so yarn is nothing but it is similar to the same uh, it is similar to the package of npm so for faster downloading of your dependencies we use this one so just click on this one and again it will install it for you it doesn't take even one or two seconds maybe it's already available in my mission so it's very fast but for you maybe within a minute it should be done anytime so again it's not a big issue so in this is the installation part of your cypress so any doubts here so far till now The first command is npm init. Uh, that is a simple command. npm init. Yeah. npm init. Yes. Okay. npm space in it. That's it. Right. So that will initialize your folder for your Cypress. 
uh, by uh, installing or by uh, writing a writing something called a packet.json so packet.json is nothing but initialization which provides the initialization for your complete project and uh, npm install cypress double hyphen save hyphen dev is nothing but that is where your exact software for your cypress will be installed and npm install hyphen g yarn is nothing but it's a compilation or advanced version of your npm which makes it to run or install your packages parallelly so it is again again for a configuration only so nothing much so as it is if you see for installation of cypress your npm install cypress double hyphen save hyphen dev should be fine So that is the way we need to do it. So and uh, for the next steps, like so, whatever we so far we have, this is the setup that is available for your Cypress. Next thing is like say to run the Cypress and to open a sample script. So you need to go to npx Cypress open. Okay. So npx is a command to run the command uh, run the commands in command line. Okay. So you can you previously like uh, like Cypress was using npm Cypress open. Still it works, but it's an older version of running your uh, configuration. Npx is the latest version for running any commands in your command line. Okay. So even you can use like say I meant something like this npm. Still you can use it, but I think the command has become void. So there is no improvements. So they gave an advanced version or the next version. We call it as npx cypress open. So this will run any command related to npm in your command line. npx. Okay. So when you click it, now you can see a native browser will be opening it for you over here as you can see. So when you see it over here, there are two different items available end to end testing and component testing. So end to end testing is nothing but whatever your as a developer we do, we do it over here. Component testing is nothing but whatever uh, as a uh, Angular or a React JS developer, if he wants to test a particular component, then he can still use this component testing. Like say when you go to component testing, you can see pick a framework. So this is completely related to your developer. So he can test his own components. So it is not useful for us. So maybe we can go back and check the end to end test. So as you can see it over here, when I click the end to end test, it has started to create a folder called your Cypress. Okay. Previously it was not there and also it has created something called your uh, cypress.config.js so this is going to be your heart of your cypress okay cypress.config.js any configurations that you need to mention or that you need to run it in your cypress will be available over here or it should be available over here so when i expand it over here you can see this is how your configuration will be available so any reporting, any uh, uh, any configuration related to Cucumber, so everything will be available over here. So this is like a Maven or a Gradle in your Cypress. So it's a build management tool, I can tell it, similar to build management tool. And the next thing is nothing but your end-to-end -end JS. So this is nothing but like say all your packages apart from Cypress because uh, what happens is like say sometimes if you want to read and write an excel sheet or sometimes if you want to a separate library file apart from cypress if you want to mention it so everything will be available or should be over here so this is like a, a manager of your project your dependency manager for your project so you can see by default commands is available so which is nothing but your command.js so your command.js is nothing but basically any script which you feel that can be used common across your entire framework then you mention it as your inside your command.js like say a simple click a login a series of command that you need to execute for every test cases like say uh, here is a classic example like say login functionality 
so if you want to write a login functionality which needs to be executed across your all uh, testing then you can use your same script like say to avoid redundancy to be make it in a simple english to avoid to avoid redundancy you can use this particular command over here and then utilize it inside your script which i'll be telling you at the later point of time when we come to cypress so as of now you can see this as a utility kind of thing and then here only your data management takes place example.json so example.json is a place where all you can put all your datas as i told you in yesterday's session uh, cypress uses the latest format json it doesn't go with your xml or something so it uses your json so you collect your data from over here json and then utilize it inside your project so this is the general structure of your cypress so as in selenium or playwright you cannot modify it up you can modify the scripts inside but not the structure basically so because they are tightly coupled which makes your cypress to be more efficient and organized okay but still if you want to use your text file or excel sheets definitely you can use it you can put it inside your fixtures or your support wherever if it is available you can put it and you can use it up so let me click on continue and then the browser is available so then you do start testing then it will ask us to create something specific to cypress which is called your spec file so every cypress will have a spec file so inside this spec file only whatever the scripting you are going to run or which is going to make your application to be automated will be made available here so here there is something called your create new spec file scaffold file we don't require it up so let's come to this at the later point of time so create new spec file is nothing we will create this particular item and you can mention any name over here like say let me mention it as a sample spec file create the spec so you can see the scripts are available simple as it is you can click ok run the spec that's it it will be loading you the files over here so this is how it works so if you want to kill it or rerun it uh, sorry first we'll see, check about rerun so if you want to rerun it just run over click over here it will rerun so if you want to change another spec file you can click on the specs and then use it so runs is nothing but how many runs you have been doing it up so that will be available so this is what i told you like say connect to cypress cloud if you want to use it you can use it up so it will have some very nice features actually so whatever failed everything will be available over here so but you need to connect to your cypress cloud so if you click on cypress cloud like it will have a login and you need to set it up so most people don't prefer so we'll leave it as it is and then the debug logs like what happened you can check it over here all these things will be available screenshots everything will be there and settings is nothing but if there is any changes that you need to make to your settings everything will be available over here we'll again see it or in the cypress session as well so these are the configurations that you can make use of it because as i told you cypress makes your life much more easier so it has some default configuration which you can use it up over here and device setting is nothing but what editor you are going to use i don't think so here vs code is available by default but you can use your custom editor and mention the path of your vs code for example vs code where have i installed i'll go to my applications here it should be there oh, vs code where is it options let me click it up vs code Uh, okay. Be over here, but it's not over here. Okay, it recognizes PyCharm, right? Okay, one minute. Let me put the oh, BB edit. Check with ah, downloads. Uh, downloads, huh? Oh, right. I don't 
going to download it will be there oh, it doesn't have it I think it's installed in my this thing I think just a moment One minute. I think it should be available in my desktop I think just a moment let me show it to you so that is just to open it by default nothing much it does actually so any debugging or all those things basically it opens it by default yeah it's inside the application but uh, let me get the info of it where it is from that's in desktop actually simple as it is so i'll go over here i'll mention it up over here slash visual studio code so simple as it is and proxy settings if you want to bypass some proxies it provides it up so desktop notifications also it provides it up whether run pass or fail everything you can use it up but again it again depends on you like whether you want to notify it or something like that so you can enable this one so this is the bigger picture of it so now again like say if you want to change it up like say let's go back to visual studio code if you want to change it like say your code is going to be available inside your end to end sample spec file this is where your code is going to be available so if you want to mention uh, like say any websites like say google.com you can go ahead with that google.com so just mention www so that it recognizes just open google page simple as it is so this is the general script so describe is nothing but it's like a scenario and it is nothing but it's like a test case so each scenario will have many test case so it's going to be like one to many concept so this is how it is so as you can see it over here so i didn't save it at but uh, you can see it over here like say when i do a save right this is where your log will be keep on running so i'll just click over here you can see it picks it over here and then it works it out you can see as i told you your cypress mostly deals with all your api that is happening in behind your scenario behind how it opens a particular code that's where it happens now you can see this is the most beautiful behavior of your cypress where if i change something like say facebook.com i just give a save it starts to run so i don't need to close anything by default it runs so this is one of the beautiful behavior of your Cypress which stands on top of your Selenium and your Playwright. So you don't need to stop or close your execution. Whatever the website you want, you can directly open it up. Maybe let me give it, let's say, com. Save it. Just you need to save. That's it. Control S. That's it. So this is how it works. So this is the very good nature in which a lot of time is saved for your QA. So you don't need to stop your script and then run your uh, modify the script and run it on a go. You can just edit it and run it simple as it is. So this is the basic script of it. So if you want to close it simple as it is, your browser is available over here. If you want to close it, just click on the close. That's it. It closes. So if you want to end this one, so basically just close it up, your execution will be ended. So this is the overall picture of your Cypress. So I request you to install and then work around with that, like say how it works. So this is a very good uh, tool and user friendly tool basically. So this is how it works. So any doubt here so far before we see about like how to run a basic JavaScript. Actually, uh, the project which we have created here is the Cypress demo first project, right? So whenever yeah. we give that npx command, it will open that uh, Cypress uh, thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like so say for example, it's, it's res with respect to the each project. 
it's folder folder structure folder it re oh. respect to what oh. folder you have open because if you see so it over say. here uh, if you uh, observe it over here i am in this folder mm. so it will take this folder and use it up let's like say for example i close it up close the entire visual close studio it up. close the entire visual studio mm -hmm. and then i open it back and then i so open it back if you want to migrate to another project maybe over here i have another project so you can see the path getting changed so your npx will work only for that particular project not the previous one so for each project that one particular window or whatever we did will get open right yes exactly like say I, this is a new project so i am giving like start end to end test so obviously you can see a lot of spec files are available for me in this project so this project will be executed so if you want to open another project open a new visual studio code and then use that one actually so it's just okay. with a terminal actually for example like okay. say where is my terminal terminal is available so like say here we did a cd right over here so now we, if i open like say npx cypress open so this is from my terminal i'm opening not from a visual studio you can see one more is opening right Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is how it behaves. That is how it behaves. So you can see over here only one file would be there. But obviously, uh, it is trying to open that one. But it is there is already a open, already a page is open, right? So that's why it is very hesitant to open. So mostly we we'll always deal with one project. One project, time, right? Exactly exactly that's what i was about to tell so mostly you don't deal with two projects like one project at a time so that is some limitations actually okay. so this is how it works so you can see a lot of attempts retrieving it and it got closed so this is how it works So this is about your Cypress. Like, uh, let's check. Like, say, any questions are there in the chat window? Uh, sir, when I uh, uh, write the command npm in it, it shows me something uh, like, uh, um, and the term npm is not recognized as the name of a CMD. Let this uh, this message is playing us uh, visible there in the terminal. Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. In your terminal, it shows you like NPM is not recognized. Right, right, sir. So when I uh, 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 mm, yeah, please go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I write the command NPM in it. Ah, okay. So did you navigate to the path actually, uh, the folder path? Uh, folder path, sir. Where, sir? Of Cypress. Of Cypress. Uh, no sir, uh, I think. Uh, no problem. Uh, just you can type like say npm double hyphen version. Just give it somewhere. Like uh, you have installed like a node, right? Yes, I installed node, right? Uh, just type node space double hyphen version whether it is recognizing. Uh, in CMD, sir. Ah uh, yeah, yeah, in CMD, yes. Uh, node hyphen version. Node space hyphen version, double hyphen version. All right. Uh, yes, it's uh, 20.4.0. Ah, now you type npm uh, space double hyphen version. Uh, that is 9.7.2. Ah, then it's fine. Then it's fine. Then it's installed globally. So what you can do it is like say. Uh, one more thing. You are using Windows, right? If I'm not wrong. All uh, right, right, sir. So what you can do, like say, set the node path in Windows. Okay. So what you can do it is like say you can set your node path in Windows. Let me show it to you. I don't have a Windows machine. Uh, sir, like... I have to. Uh, sir, uh, I think there is need to set the environmental path, right, in Windows. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, right, exactly. Right. That's what I was about uh, this to. This is. Come. A... Yeah, okay. you go to your variable, system variable, you go, there will be something called yeah. a path like this over here. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. This Just give something like this, NPM, roaming right, right. available over here. 
I think I have to set the environmental variable in the variable. system. Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Thank you. So if you set it, obviously, like uh, you need to close your browser or your Visual Studio Code and then come back. I think it should work. Right, right. I got it. Right. Yeah. Because like what happened is like you have installed your node, which is by default available inside your app data and program files, but you are making it available as an environment variable so that wherever inside your windows you type, it should invoke that particular node and Actually, there is a older version in my system. Uh, so I updated that system. So that's why environmental variable is not set up for that. Uh, sir, your voice is not uh, audible. Uh, okay, it got. Okay, maybe an internet issue, I think. So, I would suggest you like one project, you deal with one Cypress. But again, if you want to install another project, no issues. Like, say, still you can do it. Like, let me go to the demo project over here. So, again, you need to install, like, say, same way npm init you need to give over here so if you give like say npm init again it will create another uh, package or json and a new folder will be available if it's going to be a cypress but if you want a simple folder needs to be created just right click this cypress and there is a new folder available if you want the cypress itself you need to follow the same procedure again over here like say let me give it like say test Test project version. Okay, get repo keyword. Okay, it's all not mandatory. So let me give it as a yes, and that's it. So you can see, like, say, uh, one more folder will be created over here. Like, if you give the Cypress, like, say, uh, package.json will be available over here. So you can see, like, there is two package.json with the dependencies. Okay. So you can see name is there, author is there, and all these things would be available. Script, author, dev dependencies, dependencies, all these things would be there. Okay, so again, if you want to install, like say, new Cypress, you can install it up. But this will again install on the same thing again and again. So uh, this is what you meant, Sahana, if I'm not wrong. Uh, because uh, yes. uh, yeah, I have uh, um, uh, my office project as well, and uh, this test project also. I wanted to you know uh, create a different uh, 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 project, so that's why I didn't want to merge those two projects. And yeah, that's why. Oh, yeah, uh, but, uh, even I wouldn't suggest you to merge. Like say, you can have this particular project, and uh, you can again have a new project as well. Like say, you can go to file. You can, uh, like, say, open new folder. You can create it, but you can't open both the folders in the same Visual Studio. So that is not possible because one instance, one project will be created. If you want a new one, like, you can create a new window over here, and then you can open another file you want. It. So like this way, you can use it up. Okay. But I wouldn't suggest to create, like, say, two folders on the same Visual Studio. So because as it is, you can see it's a little clumsy way of using it. Uh, not a clumsy way. I would say like it's like uh, it'll result in confusion. So where and we write the code, like say it'll little bit little bit disturbing actually. Okay. So I would suggest you to use it. So use two Visual Studio Code for two different projects, so that it'll make life pretty much easier. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. So this is how we use it up. So. So, okay, so now coming back to the JavaScript. So let's see one JavaScript example. How does it work? So for that, let's go back again. So let's go to my documents. So what I'm going to do now is like, say I'm going to run a simple JavaScript with the help of index.html with the help of HTML file. So let me go to my JavaScript. So let's create something like say demo 
for day one okay so i'll go over here so as usual i'll go to my visual studio so i'm going to open that specific folder okay documents so where is it okay javascript demo day one just open it up okay so just give yes trust because it's like a by default one okay you are trusting that particular folder nothing much it's nothing related to javascript so here uh, what you can do is like say uh, file new text file you create it up uh, just save it control s you do it and save it over here as a index dot html okay and then give us save simple so now what happens is like so your javascript when it's going to be inside your index dot html it can exist in two places so one is like say, inside your html one place is nothing but your head so you can give like say this is javascript example okay so another place it can exist is like say body okay so inside a body so how does it exist basically your javascript so it, always your javascript will exist inside a tag called script tag okay so inside the script tag whatever you are going to your javascript you are going to do it it will be available for example so i am going to give something like say alert You can give like say three plus uh, like say this is a JavaScript window. Okay, save it. Now let's try to open it and check it. What happens? So how to open it basically? So right click this one. Open with Google Chrome. So you can see this is a JavaScript window. Simple as it is okay click okay you can see the title this is a javascript example okay so this is how it works you don't need to close it any modifications that you are going to do over here javascript window hi save it just refresh this all your changes will be back okay so this is how it works so the same thing you you script you can put it inside your head as well so both the places it will exist but make sure your javascript whatever you type it's inside your script tag hi i am from head okay refresh it i am from head because that is the first instance and then it will come over here hi so this is how it works okay so any doubt here so far till now so this is a simple javascript so just please hold on for a minute yeah no problem yeah so this is how it works the same thing if you want to put it inside a particular okay that we'll see it later i don't want to confuse you okay so this is how it works so if you want to do something as a mathematical calculation so basically we have something like in string and all those things right in your java here there are only three type of items or variables available which we call it as basically as your uh, let me to initialize a variable to initialize a variable so basically we have something like three things where let and const so this is how it will be available so we'll see about this in detail in the next class but let's do something over here as a mathematical so let result is equal to 3 plus 4 and then over here when i come i want to give the result okay an example So what I will do is like give a comma and then give it something as a result. So save it. 
so i want to comment it out this particular thing or like i'll leave it up over here so now let's save it and refresh that particular page and see what happens okay, the result is not coming so why it's not coming result is a number so why it's not coming so any idea why it's not coming So any guesses or something? Do we need to use any plus for that? Uh, we are using a comma, so comma should work. Maybe let's try plus. Let's, let's, let's save it. Okay. Refresh it. Yes. That's what is it. Yeah. Got it right? Because we are appending it. Comma doesn't work much. Okay, so this is the blind HTML way of using it. Now let me show you an example, like why we install the code runner. So if you remember at the beginning of the session, we would have installed something like a code runner. So why we installed it? So let's have this as a simple Java JavaScript file. Sample file. Dot JS. Your JavaScript is always denoted by a JS. Save it. And now what you can do it is like the same script I'm going to give it over here. Okay. Same script. So I'm going to give it over here. Okay, let's try like this, no problem. And then what we are going to do about over here is like say, instead of alert, we are going to give like console.log because yesterday if you remember like say, whatever is written, for JavaScript logs, it will be like this, the result data, okay, because of result, save it. So once you install your code runner, you get a button like this, just run this one. So this is why I asked you to install the code runner. So you don't need to do anything, directly run it. It gives you the result over here. No need to write a HTML file, no need a head, no need a body, no need a script all these things we don't require it so whatever logic you want to give you can directly give it and do a console.log if you don't give console.log obviously it will not be printed like say for example if i comment it out and if i run sorry i need to save it okay i didn't save it if i run nothing comes out so always do a save that is one problem over here it doesn't auto save so this is why we install the code runner as a beginner, it will be more useful to you. You don't need to have the headache of index.html and stuff. So this is what is about I had for today. So just some basic script things. So once this thing is fine, like you can give a try so that uh, tomorrow we'll see about we'll deep dive into the JavaScript part. Okay, we'll see what is let, what is where, what is constant and all those things. Uh, sir, how many classes for JavaScript? Uh, I think it should go about like around uh, five to eight sessions maybe. Okay. But not more than 10 actually, not more than 10. All right, sir. Uh, sir, would you please like to uh, share the recording of this session? Oh yeah, it will be. Uh, I think once I uh, once the class ends, I think it will be shared by tomorrow morning. I think, uh, but I'm not. But mostly by before tomorrow morning, it will be shared. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So this is all I had for today. Maybe let me know for any doubts. We can do it. A Q and A now. So if there is no doubts, like feel free to drop off. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So again, we'll have tomorrow the same timing. Thanks for attending the sessions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.